You're live. Oh my God, it worked. Woo. Okay. Cool. All right, guys. Uh, sorry, guys. Had some technical difficulties. I'm here now. All right. So, um, YouTube, you guys are just joining in. Facebook, you guys have been patient with me. I've been uh, just trying to get my YouTube uh, YouTube thing figured out and broadcasted. So this is a beginner's FAQ. Um, what I want to do in this video is talk about some common beginner questions that we're getting from people who are just starting um, with Manful Yoga. We are into our second week of our challenge, Mission Daily Yoga. You don't have to be participating in that challenge to get a lot out of this video. Uh, you're still going to get a lot of really useful information. Um, but uh, if you are following along to Mission Daily Yoga right now, you're in week two. Um, probably some questions that have come up, some concerns. So I want to just address some of that stuff. We've also had a lot of really great conversations going on in the Manful Yoga community on Facebook. And this is where we, this is our private Facebook group. This is where we have conversations um, about anything really, mostly, mostly health and fitness stuff. Obviously a lot of questions with yoga. Um, there's also been a lot of really inspiring posts lately. People are doing their one year transformations. People who started Manful Yoga a year ago. Um, and, uh, and what they look like today after a year of manful yoga and living a healthy lifestyle. So it's really inspiring to see that there. So I just wanted to bring out some of those conversations that we've been seeing in there and make them more public because I do answer a lot of questions in there that you're not going to see, um, publicly. So I thought it'd just be a great way to, um, to talk about that. So one question that first came up is how far should you push into the pose? And I thought this was a really good question. And he was He's basically saying, like, do I go as far as I can until I feel a stretch or do I go as far as I possibly can when I get started? And the answer is you want to go. You want to go as far as you you want to go to the point where you feel the stretch. So let's say my goal is to how do I do that? Let's let's make this really simple. So if my goal is to stretch my hand, which you probably wouldn't do in yoga, right? This is not a typical pose. But if my goal is to just stretch my fingers. I'm not going to push it as far as I can go immediately and go to my maximum point if I want to get the best stretch possible. What I want to do is I want to open up. I want to feel that stretch working. I want to get to a point where it's really not that intense, maybe like a three out of 10 or something like that. And then I'm going to breathe into that stretch. And then I'll go deeper into it from there. So you want to establish the sensation that you're going for. And I, I will usually tell you that in, if you're following along to one of my workouts, I'm going to tell you, this is what you should be feeling. This is the muscles you should be engaged. This is the stretch you should be feeling. So you want to go to the point where you feel that stretch happening and don't go beyond that until you start breathing and you start feeling your body adapt to it. Um, one mistake that people make is doing the opposite or not even the opposite, but they go, they try to go as far as they can into it immediately. So instead of just going, okay, let me find a nice stretch, they go, okay, let me get as far as I can and I'll just hold this and grit my teeth. And the reason why we want to go into a, a depth of range of motion that's that's manageable and not something that's super intense is because your body isn't going to open up if you do um, if you do the other way. You want to you want to go into it where it's comfortable, where you can where you can maintain that slow controlled breathing and then you can kind of push and go further into it from there. But if you go straight to your end range immediately, you're not going to be able to get your breathing under control, which is the breathing is going to facilitate the stretching of your muscles and your fascia and allowing you to get more flexible. So you just want to go to a low level of your full range of motion, just get to the point where you feel that stretch and then you can increase it from there. Once you start to, once you start to focus on the breathing. So I thought that was a really good question. Um, and that's one that I wanted to answer here. Um, some other questions we have, we always get questions about motivation. So I've been addressing a lot of that in these live broadcasts I've done. I've done two, I think in the last couple of weeks. Um, that's one that I would, that's one that I would definitely, um, you know, I would recommend looking at some of those past broadcasts that I've done. Uh, I also have a ton of other content on uh, on manfulyoga.tv on our members area slash app where you're going to find stuff on motivation and accountability. Um, but 
motivation. Um, we have a lot of really cool tips from our community. Um, we had a whole post about it. We actually made a, we, we had a whole um, discussion on it in our Manful Yoga Facebook group where people were giving their feedback and giving things that have worked for them. Um, and then um, we also made a post about it on Facebook and on Instagram um, last week. So go back and check out our previous posts. And if you don't follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you should definitely do that. We have a lot of content um, that you're not going to see over there. Um, so lots of motivational posts, a lot of information. Um, and we always like to share, share stuff that's going on within our community too. So uh, make sure you're following me on Instagram and on Facebook. And it's just Manflow Yoga, M-A-N-F-L-O-W Yoga. Um, but one of the one of the things with motivation that that stuck out with me in that discussion we were having is is being able to appreciate the results of your workout right after you finish it. So um, almost everyone said that you're going to feel the results. You're going to feel better. You're going to feel more confident about yourself. You're going to feel more accomplished immediately after finishing the workout which is really cool. Um, a lot of, you know, a lot of things we have to wait until we have to wait until, you know, weeks or months until we start to notice the results of something. But the cool thing about these workouts with manful yoga and with largely yoga in general is that you will feel better immediately afterwards, um, stretching your muscles, getting your muscles active, getting blood flowing through your body. Um, this all helps you feel better. It's going to help reduce strain on your joints. It'll help with reducing pain or discomfort. And you actually will get a boost of energy, a boost of, um, you know, boost of confidence. You're just going to feel better. You'll have better posture. So having better posture is actually going to help you um, with reducing your stress and just making you feel better. It changes um, it literally changes the hormones that you're putting out, just having better posture. So there are some really cool things that happen immediately after doing a yoga workout. And if you can focus on those benefits right after they happen, that's going to make it so that you're motivated to do it again the next day. So you can remember, oh, I feel better when I do this. You can actually, you can actually feel something. Um, you can, there's tangible benefits to doing yoga on a regular basis. So that's one thing, um, that really stuck out in that conversation with motivation is focusing on what you're getting out of the workouts in the immediate. Um, if you focus on what you're getting out of them long term, that's definitely rewarding. Um, but that's not going to encourage the creating the habit because when we want to create a habit, we need to notice that there is an immediate benefit as soon as we finish, like milliseconds after you finish, you want to be able to feel that feeling of accomplishment from doing something. So for example, for me, um, I am getting back into my habit of doing morning yoga. I have a pretty solid habit of doing yoga at night. You know, I do it on my own throughout the, throughout the day or for a workout if I'm recording. Um, but for a while I was not doing my morning yoga because my morning yoga, my morning habit had just been, um, just changed significantly because I had a son and I hadn't been able to, fit it back in uh, mindfully. So now that I'm doing that again, I am very appreciative of how I feel immediately after doing the routine. I feel about, I feel good about it for a number of reasons. Uh, my body feels better. I feel less stressed, less anxious. I feel more in control. I'm able to have better focus. Um, I feel good about myself because this is really important to me. Me doing yoga on a daily basis is really important to me. So I just feel better about myself when I'm doing it. I also know that I feel better for my workouts later in the day if I do a little bit of yoga and some stretching at the beginning of the day. So if you can focus on the immediate benefits of the activity that you're doing, that's really going to help um, with your motivation. So um, I had somebody ask about the book earlier in case you missed it. So I, in case you missed it, I just released a brand new book, Yoga for Athletes. I should have a copy around here somewhere. Um, here it is. So this is the book. This is actually my wife's copy. This is Yoga for Athletes. And this is a book that I wrote specifically for athletes to teach them how to use yoga to get stronger at their sport of choice. So if you are a runner, if you are a triathlete, if you are a weightlifter, um, or if you're a similar athlete, 
This book is specifically written for you guys to teach you how you can get better at what you already enjoy doing um, with just a few minutes of yoga per day. So we also have a, a pose guide in there. We have workouts in there that you can use. Um, and even if you're not an athlete, it's still going to be helpful because you still have, you know, we st even if you're not an athlete, you're going to have things in your body that you want to fix. You might have knee pain, you might have back pain, you might have shoulder pain. And um, this is going to teach you how to deal with all of that. So anyways, Yoga for Athletes now available. Um, it is available worldwide. So you can find it. Most places books are sold um, online. Um, it was in... It was in my bookstores here in Austin, Texas. Um, but anyways, it's available. So get a copy. And then we also have some um, some free workouts that go with it. If you want to become a yoga, for VI, a yoga for Athletes VIP, you can do that for free at manfulyoga.com slash VIP dash athlete. So check that out if you want to see some free routines from the book. So, um, all right. So other questions. Um, I've got my list of things to go through here. All right. So one of the things that I saw, um, one of the things that I saw from, from people who are doing the challenge right now. So by the way, if you're not already in the challenge, if you become a member, you'll get access to that challenge and you can become a member with a free seven day trial and try it out and see what you think of it at manfulyoga.com slash join. And again, it's a free seven day trial. Um, it's a really good way to see if this is a good fit for you. Uh, but anyways, we have our, our new year's challenge going on right now. It's called mission daily yoga. And one of the things that I'm seeing is if you aren't able to do all of the workouts day by day. So typically it's one workout per day, not typically it is one workout per day, but I see a lot of people who are doubling, tripling, or even doing four workouts per day because they didn't do the, uh, they didn't do the workouts. They weren't able to do them one per day. And this is really, this is badass because you're doing, you know, four workouts in one day, but it's not a sustainable habit. Um, and it's not, you know, it's, it's not, it's not sustainable and it's, it's, it's not going to help you be consistent in the long term. The focus of the, of this challenge is helping you be consistent in the long term. So if you are finding that you have to double, triple, or you're doing like four workouts per day just to keep up with the challenge, there's probably a scheduling thing going on. There's, you're probably not planning things out in advance. So I would recommend that you figure out um, how you can change your existing schedule to make room for a simple 10 to 15 minute yoga session. So where in your schedule is it practical that you can do 15 minutes Per day, figure that out and then use the following formula to make sure you do your habit. So if we want to do it after you wake up in the morning, you're going to say, after I wake up in the morning, get out of bed and walk down the hallway, I will go into my living room and do 15 minutes of yoga. Okay. So you really want to be specific with it like that. You want to figure out when exactly in the routine and specifically after which specific action are you going to do your morning yoga or your evening yoga or whatever it is? I say morning yoga because for most people, doing exercise in the morning is the best way to be consistent. I'm not saying that's for everybody. For If you have more time in the evening, then it's probably going to work better for you in the evening. But just saying for most people, exercising in the morning um, yields more benefits. It's more, more noticeable benefits throughout the day. Um, and it, for most people, it works because our mornings aren't as cluttered as our evenings. So if you can plan on doing something in the morning, you're more likely to do it, get out of the way, make sure you finish it. And then, you know, when life hits the fan and when life happens and shit hits the fan um, in the evening, you won't have to worry about doing your workout because you've already done it. So anyways, um, if you are finding that you have to double up your workouts or you're doing, um, you know, or you're doing too much, uh, doing too much in one day, then plan it out in advance. Figure out a way that it can be that it can be uh, more realistic. Um, a couple questions have come up. What do you think about on-demand at-home yoga practices? Well, I think they're amazing because that's what I do. Um, that is what I believe in because this is literally everything that I create here with Manful Yoga is on-demand at-home yoga practices. Um, I think a lot of the reasons why people might not think an at-home 
yoga practice is uh, effective or is actually incorrect. A lot of people think that you're not going to get the proper technique instruction if you're doing it at home. Um, the truth is that depending on the video that you're watching, depending on the instructor, with me at least, you're going to get a lot more technique feedback than you are in person at a yoga studio. Why? Because the yoga studio is providing not only a workout class, but it's also providing an experience. Most yoga, most yoga workouts are also spiritual. Um, they include spiritual stuff. So you're not going to get as much focus on, um, you know, on the technique. So it just depends on what you want to get out of your yoga workouts. Um, if you're interested in a spiritual experience, you're going to hate man flow yoga probably. Um, but if you're really interested in improving your fitness with yoga and you're interested in learning how to make your body healthier, how to have, um, you know, more functional movement, how to feel better with your body, um, how to engage your muscles properly, how to get as much strength as possible with yoga, then you'll like manful yoga because that's what we really focus on. So Matt, to answer your question, um, yes, I absolutely believe in on-demand at-home yoga. Um, the only thing that's lacking is, you know, in-person community atmosphere. We do have a, we do make up a lot of that. We have a, a really amazing Facebook group um, where we have, we've been having a ton of posts lately. I think we've been seeing 10 to 20 posts a day in our group um, and a lot of really inspiring posts. Um, a lot of, a lot of really cool stories, a lot of inspirational, um, you know, comments and posts. So that really does help with the motivation. It does make it feel like a community. Um, Elbytes, an online community. But it's never going to replace an in-person, you know, experience. So if you need that in-person experience, then you won't like on demand. So um, Trent, uh, are most poses, are you supposed to be flexing and engaging muscles or focusing on a structure of a muscle? I find it difficult to do both. So you're going to do both. Um, actually, it's not, it, it shouldn't be difficult to do because when you engage one muscle, the antagonist muscle or the opposite muscle group is going to stretch. So for example, when I... When I, when I flex my bicep completely, when I shorten my bicep completely, my triceps stretch. Or when I, you know, if I, if I lengthen, if I shorten my quadriceps and flex my quadriceps, my hamstrings lengthen. So your body works in opposites. So, um, you know, if you're having trouble with that, um, you know, it's just something that's going to come with time, with practicing, with focusing on your body. Um, it's not going to happen immediately uh, just because your body, your mind have to kind of, you know, you have to work it a little bit until you build that body mind connection. Um, but typically, if you can do something for in terms of building that 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 muscle activation, in terms of building that awareness and, and getting better at controlling your body like that, I'd say four weeks of consistency is going to um, is going to help train your body to do that. But it might not even take that long. Um, it could take shorter than that. It could take a couple weeks. Uh, but important is consistency. And I would say at least three times per week. And if you can do it five or six times per week, that's even better. So, um, yeah. Um, you could upload a weekly, maybe video with a yoga class. Uh, getting a comment here. Be great if you could upload weekly yoga classes for those days when you just want to flow with a guided sequence. So that is what I do um, on my app and in my members area. So if you want where you're getting a, you know, a workout that you can follow along to, that's actually what I, that is what I do. <laughs> that is what all of this exists for. Um, so that you can go on my app in my members area, follow a program and then follow along to a guided workout. So uh, that's here on the YouTube channel. And it's also, um, we have some of that stuff for free here on YouTube. Um, most of it is in my app and in my members area. Um, and that's a very, very reasonable price at, um, anywhere from 15 to $30 a month, depending on the frequency that you select. So, uh, if you are looking for workouts that you can follow along to, and also a structured program that you can actually choose based on your goals and then follow that. So you have a schedule to follow. Um, that's literally what I do. That's the whole reason this exists. Uh, if I didn't have that, I probably wouldn't do this because I wouldn't just do this, you know, cause it takes time and there's a team that we have to pay. So I wouldn't be doing this if there weren't the workouts on the app and the members area. So uh, check that out at manfulyoga.tv. Um, some other cool things. So um, we launched a calendar. We haven't done this before, but we put out a calendar 
um, for just a manful yoga calendar for 2022. Um, and one thing that you can do to help with accountability and motivation is just simply to mark an X on your calendar. On, you get a monthly calendar and you just put an X on the days that you complete your workout. Um, and that's something that's really easy to do. And it, it might even seem kind of silly, but having that X on something that's visible, seeing that you've completed something X number of days in a row is actually really motivational and it's really easy to do. Um, and and it, it can really help with 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 creating a feeling of accomplishment. And ultimately, when we're trying to build these habits, we do want to focus um, on, we want to focus on creating a sense of accomplishment. We want to feel better about ourselves. Um, and one reason that people really like manful yoga is because it's it's something that's very effective, but from a physical exertion standpoint, and from you know the the relative amount of stress that you're pointing that you're putting on your joints, it there is none. It's no impact. Um, it feels it, it. You're getting a lot out of it, but it's not very hard on your body. So it's a good way for you to feel stronger and get stronger with minimal stress on your body. So that's one reason why people are really successful with manful yoga is because if you compare it to um, a type of workout where you, it's just a lot more um, high impact on your body. It's more stressful on your body. Then um, it's it's those higher impact workouts make it harder to be consistent. If you're in pain or you're, you're in discomfort or you're dreading your next workout because you don't want your joints to hurt, then that makes it a lot less likely that you're going to be consistent. But if you're doing manful yoga, it's, it's a lot easier to be consistent because you're not beating your joints up as much. You don't have that pain or that discomfort. Um, you're going to feel the muscles burning. You're going to feel like you did something, but it's not going to be hurting your joints. And I find that actually having that muscle burn is, is inspiring. It's, it's motivating because it tells you, it's your body telling you, hey, you did something. You broke down the muscles in your body, and now we have to rebuild them because you did such, you know, you exerted yourself so much. So, um. All right. Let's see here. So Timothy calendar just arrived. Awesome. Uh, Russell says the app is really worth every penny. Lots of workouts and tutorials on there. Been there six months. It's great. Thank you, Russell. All right. Let's see here. Oh, this is a good question. Um, so Rob Cummings has any tips or MFI programs that are good to do after a big weightlifting session to reduce soreness. So really, um, Rob, you're going to want to focus on restorative yoga for this. So if you go into the manfulyoga.tv on the app or the members area, and you just search for workouts based on restorative or yin yoga, those are the workouts that you're going to want to do. Um, if you're trying to reduce soreness, what I found is you don't want to focus as much on strength in yoga workouts, if you're trying to reduce soreness, what you want to do instead is just get a little bit of muscle burn. You want to feel, you know, those muscles engaging for five to 10 seconds, but then you want to focus a little bit more on flexibility. So if you can get a really nice stretch from your workout and also not, but not push yourself so much with strength. So, um, you don't want to do, you know, like 30 or 45 seconds of really intense isometric strengthening. If your goal is recovery. You just want to do a few seconds of that and then do some holds, do some stretches where you feel that muscle lengthening, where you're feeling your body kind of adjust to the pose. And if you can do that um, within a day or a day and a half after your workout, that's really going to help out significantly with reducing um, soreness from, from weightlifting or some other, some other workouts. Um, but in general, you want to do stuff where, again, it's less intense, not as much strength. Um, and personally, I foam roll pretty much every every other day. Um, I find that I, I started lifting weights again about a year ago um, consistently. And I've personally found that doing yoga and combining that with a few minutes of foam rolling has been really effective for making sure that I don't get too sore um, two days after I work out. So that would be my recommendation. Um do you think it's best to alternate days of yoga practice and weight training? I have a blog on this called, um, it's on the Manful Yoga blog, but it basically talks about how to integrate yoga and weight training. Um, the short answer is 
you should break up your yoga workouts and your weight training workouts. You don't want to combine them together into one super long two hour workout. Um, but what you can do is you can do a shorter yoga workout as a warm up or a shorter yoga workout as a cool down, as long as it's recovery focused, lots of nice long stretches. Um, but um, in general, if you're doing a yoga workout and a, and a weight training workout, you should split those up. You should do one on one day and one on another day. Um, and if you absolutely have to do them both on the same day, then you're going to want to do yoga in the morning and then weight training in the afternoon or the evening or the other way around. So you can do it either, either, or, um, you just want to make sure you also reduce your volume. So you're not going to do as much if you're doing two per day. So there, Woo. my voice is getting sore. I need some water. All right. Um, and then another question, uh, good question here. Um, how can we get more flexible? What's the best way? So um, this question was in our Manful Yoga community on Facebook. Somebody asked, what's the best way to get more flexible? Um, and the truth is you want to combine strength and flexibility. So you don't want to do just passive stretching, um, which is what we really avoid in Manful Yoga. We really do focus on... Um, we really do focus on combining strength and mobility. And if you really, if you go and do my workout library and do any workout, any intense workout, you're going to realize what that feels like. Um, but basically we want to get to a point in end range of motion. Let's say I'm doing an airplane pose or I'm doing, um, a pyramid or something. I want to get to my end range of motion. So I want to go as deep as I can into the pose. And then I want to understand from that deep position, how would I move my leg or what would I need to, what muscle would I need to use to move my leg in that position or move my arm in that position? And if you can engage those muscles, then that's what's going to help you really improve your active mobility. Um, and that's what's going to help you see more, uh, more impressive gains in your flexibility. So part of it is, is, is combining strength and flexibility. The other part of that is doing self myofascial release work. Um, and self-myofascial release is just a big word for self-massage, but you want to do stuff like with lacrosse balls, um, something called a knot out. So foam rollers, and this is going to help to break up. Um, so this is what's going to help to break up um, muscle tissue. This is what's going to help you um, get into areas that are knotted or get into muscles um, that are more, just more restricted. And that's going to help you. Um, and that's just going to help you with your flexibility. So it's not just yoga, um, doing that extra body work, getting, getting massages. That's also going to help. Um, let's see here. Um, all right. Marizio. I don't speak Italian. Sorry. Um, let's see here. The telephone. Is that, a, is that a money sign? You holding up money with a telephone? One million dollars. One million dollars and I will give you my phone number. But money first. Um, and I'm really just joking. Please don't. Um, please don't. Okay, so didn't explain myself. Sorry, I was talking about quick practices without the technical instructions just for fun. Um, so like a quick workout. So we have shorter workouts. Uh, we have workouts that are uh, we categorize them as 15 minutes or shorter. We actually have a lot of these right now because we've been releasing workouts as part of our yoga for athletes series. So these are workouts that are usually 15 minutes or less. Some of them are a little bit longer, like 17 or 18, but these are 15 minutes or less. And these are really nice for fitting into your workout schedule. Uh, if you don't have too much time, but there's absolutely no reason why you have to do 30 or 45 or 60 minutes. Uh, 15 minutes, 10 minutes is extremely helpful. We do have a lot of shorter routines that you can do for that. Um, all righty. Um, let me see here. So um, my voice is starting to hurt and I can't, I don't know if I can scream anymore at the computer. So um, I think that's it for today. I'm going to be doing these um, next Monday. So Monday at 3 p.m. Central time. Um, if you're on my email list, you're going to get an email about it with a link. You can sign up for my email list um, by going to manfulyoga.com. 
Um, and if you sign up for my free seven day challenge, which is different from my trial, but that is a seven day challenge that you can do on YouTube. Um, 15 minute workouts. It's uh, it's beginner workouts. It's focused on helping you get the benefits of yoga and learn yoga. You can sign up for that at manfulyoga.com slash seven D C. So I think the link should be here in the bio in the, not in the bio, sorry, in the description, possibly, but if not go to manfulyoga.com slash seven DC. Um, and that's a really good way to get started. So, um, and yeah, and that'll also get you on my email list. And that way you'll know when I have these live videos, I will send out an email. Sometimes I'll send out an email about it and let you know the link and that stuff. Um, but if not, just meet me back here on YouTube, 3 PM central on, on Monday. All right, guys. Um, Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope this was helpful um, and I will look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. Uh, if you're in the challenge, I hope you're enjoying it a lot. Um, I'm really, it's really cool seeing all the comments. So please keep up the comments, keep up the conversations that we have going on in the Facebook group. It's really awesome. Um, and yeah, let's make week two awesome. Uh, I've said awesome way too many times. Let's make week two fantastic. There, that's a different adjective. All right, guys. Uh, see you next week. Thanks again for joining. Bye.